Today I am going to show you the ReTime Timetable Live Editor task. Let's start by taking a look at a timetable from our workspace in the Live Editor. As you can see, these timestamps are approximately two minutes apart, but they are not equally spaced. We can also use the Live Editor to see more details about the timetable variables. For example, we can see all of the categories in the variable status. And we can see the values in the variable site one displayed as a histogram. Suppose that we wanted this data to be equally spaced, perhaps at every two minutes, to be consistent with a model we are trying to fit. Let's take a look at our options for live editor tasks in the task gallery. Here we see several tasks for data pre-processing, and then we see the tables and timetables category. In this category, we find the read time timetable task. This task can do interpolation based resampling as well as aggregation. Let's add it to our script. We can see this new task has shown up in our live scripts and it has several controls for us to fill in, starting with the input data. Let's select the timetable from our workspace as the input. We notice that this task has produced a new timetable and it has chosen some default values for these controls. The task has picked a smart default of two minute increments for this particular data, which is exactly what we wanted. The general rule for filling rows corresponding to new timestamps defaults to fill with missing. Before we change the values of these controls, let's turn the auto run off so that every click or value change will not result in a new calculation. Let's also rename the output to something more specific to the operation we are performing. Now we can change the general rule from a filling method to interpolation. When we change the general rule to interpolation, we notice that we get a new exception here. The status variable is categorical, so interpolation is not defined. The task has determined that this should be an exception to the general rule. Let's change the rule for the status variable to fill with the nearest value. Now we're ready to see the result. So let's turn auto run back on. The task has run the section again to give us our resulting data. We see that status has been correctly filled with nearest values and the numeric data has all been interpolated whenever necessary. Now that we've done interpolation based resampling, we can move on to aggregation. Suppose that our model requires time steps of 10 minutes instead of two minutes. Let's adjust the controls to use 10 minute increments. In this case, we might want to instead average the temperatures in each time bin. Let's adjust the controls to aggregate using the mean. Looking at the result again, we see that the time is now in 10 minute intervals. To find out what this task is running, let's view the code. We see that this particular result has required calling the retime function twice. First to retime the numeric data by aggregating, then to retime the status variable filling with the nearest value. This seems reasonable, so let's hide the code again. Finally, we can choose to minimize the task or convert to editable code. From here, we are ready to use the new timetable in our next step in preprocessing. Taking another look at the gallery, we could focus in on cleaning up variables with clean missing data or clean outlier data. Or we could combine this timetable with other timetables using synchronized timetables. This task allows you to retime multiple timetables at once and combine the result. As we have seen, live editor tasks simply represent a series of MATLAB commands, but they can be used to reduce development time, errors, and time spent visualizing results.